Oh, can I? Oh, it's a bloody hot day here in Australia, I can tell you. Bloody record-breaking temperatures everywhere. But anyhow, enough of that. I'll talk about that another day, bloody weather. Uh, before Christmas, before I started my no more new kits rule, I'll talk about that another day, I, um, I made an order. Now, um, somewhere around here, because I'm bloody packing to piss off to Brisbane, that's, that's what's happening in my bloody house. But I think in one of these boxes, yes, it's here. <laughs> cleverly set up, <clears throat> is um, the brand new kit from Hobby Boss of the BT-2, right? A Russian tank, right? Bloody brilliant, this thing. Now, I built the Zvezda BT-7, and it's, um, well, you know, it, it's what it is. Uh, threw away about 90% of it and replaced it with aftermarket parts to get the sort of look I wanted. But the BT-7 used to be all there was until Tamiya brought out their kits, and they're, they're very good by, by all... Um, reports. I mean, I, I was nearly going to go and buy a BT5 or a BT7 or whatever is available from Tamiya to give them a try. But then this came out, and I prefer Trump and Hobby Boss, much more the kind of kits I like. Tamiya to me are just bake and shake, you know, you just chuck the glue in the box, shake it, out falls the kit. There's no intelligence or skill required. I know there's some kits where that is, but, you know, the kind of kits I've seen with Tamiya, the experience I've had, they're as boring as batshit. That's just my opinion. Okay, yes, let the hate mail begin. Now, the BT2 from Hobby Boss, well, as I said, I saw some pre-sprue shots and a few things before Christmas, but oh, that looks good, and I put an order in at BNA anyway, so that's pre, pre this year, so I didn't break my rules of not acquiring any new kits for this year, and it arrived this week, and uh, I was so thrilled, so excited. I haven't opened the box or pulled the parts out of the sprue yet. I've been waiting to do this video and share it with you, so... My enjoyment and excitement will be the same as yours. We'll have a shared experience. How good is that? Yes. All right, enough waffling. Oh, it's this bloody heat. I tell you. Goodness me. Oh, you know, friggin' melting out here. Look, look at what it's done to Mr. Whippy Van. Yeah, exactly. Friggin' hot. It's ridiculous. Anyhow, none of that. I'm going to put the air conditioner back on because I don't have it on when I do these stand-ups because it's too friggin' bloody noisy. But anyhow, without further ado... <laughs> There is 25% more waffle in my videos. Have you read the beginning titles? Here is my review of the Hobby Boss BT2. So what do you get for your shekels? Well, it's pretty nice box art. I mean, uh, I like that. That gives you an indication straight away what's going on. Uh, green, green and green. Yes, yeah, just standard 4BO. Bit of a sort of a history here. You can read that in your own time. Usual sort of very stock standard way that hobby bus and trumpet to do their kits you got a picture in your name nothing much kit number eight four five one four for those people that are kit counting the right numbers um, yes now here's what's interesting and i'll show more of this later there's an alternate camo scheme that is rather pretty and of course you know me i like to do anything that's weird one dollar form and wacky and this certainly fits the bill you get photo etch in this yes look at that and you get a whole lot of numbers so you can basically make any division or any numbered tanky that you want. So that's basically the box. Now, I have just taken the tape off so we can have a open it up nice and quickly. So what do you get? The usual sort of blurby things, um, something about tools. Yes, there's a whole lot of these special tools. Trumpet does this, they've got all these, their own brand of tools now. So there's a bit of advertising for those. You know, you've basically got an eyebrow pencil and that looks like um, a curling wand or you want to do sort of your hair there. And there's some other things here to make yourself look really pretty at the workbench. Yeah, thanks Trumpeter. Um, Hobby Boss, who are that? Now look, this is what I love about Trumpeter and Hobby Boss. You get these beautiful full colour painting guides. Admittedly, in a tank that's all green, it's kind of a waste. Yes, you, you could go black and white, admittedly, admittedly. But you get to see it, at least in the colour that it should be. But then, oh yes, now we have prettiness. This is what I would do. This looks far more interesting. That's a, a winter camo scheme. It actually doesn't quite tell you where it is and what it is. I'll do some research. <laughs> That'd be a bloody change, wouldn't it? I'll do some research and find out what's going on here, but I don't care, that looks pretty. I'm going to do that, whatever it is. Certainly looks very interesting to me. Uh, what else we get? We've got more blurbs, okay? We have more blurbs in the box. We've got a big advert here for November 218 and 2018, and there's a raff. Ooh, Australian bird. Well, there you go. Very pretty raff with a lot of uh, things. That's got nothing to do with this bloody review. Oh, here we go. And you get an advert for the tank you're buying. 
Yes. <laughs> but anyhow, look at all that. That's what we're going to look at shortly. It certainly does look interesting, doesn't it? Okay. All right. Instructions. Okay. We'll do my traditional method where we'll go through the instructions and as we find parts of interest, we'll whack out the plastic and have a look. But just quickly, let's see what sprues they give us. So everything's bagged, which is beautiful. So you've got a lovely tub. That's been bagged. That looks really nice. You've got the, um, the top. That looks lovely. You've got slide moulded, obviously, a, um, a turret. That is looking really nice. We'll have a look at that in detail when we go through the kit. You've got clear parts. So we've got the headlamps. They're all nice and clear. So that's all good. Um, what else we've got here? Here's that little photo etch. <laughs> it's tiny. Yes, it's a token photo etch. You know. uh, everything's in individual bags. So they're nicely sealed. Everything looks very cleanly moulded, as I would expect from a new generation Hobby Wise kit. Very clean, very nicely done. You know, this should be a joy. Oh, we've got individual track links. Not a lot on a on this sort of early model series. I mean, the BT7 I had from um, Zvezda had these track links, these exact ones, but they're really VT2 to VT5. The BT7 had a slightly different one, a slightly narrower, which I ended up buying after market because, quite frankly, the track links supplied in that Zvezda kit didn't fit the BT7 because they were the wrong ones, dickheads. We'll see how these go. I'm sure Hobby Boss have done a much better job. Wheels, wheels, wheels. Oh, they look lovely. They look lovely in the bag already. Lots of wheels. And then we have basically springs and things and bits and pieces. We'll find out more about that as we go. And oh, look, here's those um, day cows. Water slide transfers. So I'm not having this battle with anybody again. Water slide transfers. Don't they look great? Can't see a bloody thing, of course. All right, let's look at the instructions and then we'll pull out, I'll debag these. We'll pull out the parts one by one and see what they look like and see where they're gonna go in this kit. Hold the press. Just as I'm about to do the review for this Hobby Boss BT2, the backer turns up and says, well, you should have a look at the Tamiya BT7. You're always bloody complaining about Tamiya and bagging on about it. Here's my kit, this is Becker's kit then you can do a fair comparison, and fair enough. So this video will change a little bit from an unboxing and a review of the BT2. We will still do that. We're also gonna have a look at the BT7. Now I know the apples and oranges, the BT2 and the BT7 represent quite a different evolution of the BT series, but there are a lot of similarities. There's uh, the Christie suspension, the basic body tub. Most of the tank is the same. They change things like the turret. They change things like the wheels and the, you know, there's various things that do change. I'll take those into account, but I'm going to do a comparison in this way. Which kit would I rather build? Would I rather build Tamiya's BT7, which by all accounts is very good, or do I want to build my Hobby Wasp BT2, okay? Which one I built? This is assuming I haven't bought either, and I'll be just doing this comparison and then say, well, maybe the Tamiya kit's got merit. Maybe I should build that. Or maybe I'll say, no, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> Let's build the BT2. Who knows? I'll try and be as fair and impartial as possible, okay? Step one in the Hobby Boss kit is the assembly of the tub. And basically, you've only got two parts and they fit together brilliantly. Now this is a lot easier than the Zvezda kit that I made. Because basically in the Zvezda kit you had all these bits with separate parts and you had to wrangle them all together and try and get the angles right and bevel it up to edges that were open. And um, then you had to somehow fit the top on and make sure it all fitted together, which was a bit of mucking around. Now, Tamiya, we're doing comparison. Tamiya goes the old Zvezda route. Almost identical in some ways, except Tammy has both the inside and the outside covers, as, as we'll see later on. So you've got the top, and admittedly this is a BT7 for the Tamiya, um, but then you've got your side pieces, and um, you'll have a, a rear piece around here as well. And you'll have here, you'll have the front, the front um, angle pieces, and uh, there's your top, that must have been the bottom before. Yes, who can tell? And there's your, here's your back plate. And, and it, just like the Zvezda kit, you have all these pieces and trapezoid angles and you have to wrangle them all together. Oh, look, it can be done, but um, why bother? When Hobby Wasp just says, look, let's um, slide mould something really sharp and crisp and clear and give you a shape that's all set up and it's nice and rigid. So that's lovely. That is really, really lovely. And the, um, the back is already on there. 
Um, I know we're comparing apples and oranges some of the time, but basically the BT series are very similar, very, very similar. And we're only looking at the sort of quality of the kit. I don't have a BT2 from Tamiya to compare, so I can only do this. And I assume, like most people that have done the BT series, they're um, just modifications. But it's a very good snap fit, very clean, very nice. Now, the instructions then continue on, and in step two, you start adding little bits and pieces, and more pieces, which are all over here in... Um, I think it's sea sprue. Sea sprue, yeah. So sea sprue, you start adding all this internals. You've got springs, you've got swing arms, you've got little um, strengthening bars. That's the whole interior. Now Tamiya does this as well. They have a very similar sort of setup. They have all the bits and pieces that add on, and that's um, that's all well and good. Both the kits are very similar in that respect. The um, quality of the parts here on the Hoibos kit are exquisite. They're, um, there's no flash. Beautifully detailed, tiny little sprue joins. You know, they are study art. It's really nice. Now we have a look at Tamiya. They've just put some... Uh, let's see if we can get a, get a clearer shot. They have just included the spacing internally to fix to the external plates. That's it. There's... Um, there's no fun in there. There's no springs or anything. Admittedly, you probably wouldn't see the springs, but you might want to um, actually um, display the tank damage to something like that with the Hoi Boss one. You could you could rip open a panel and show internal guts. So points off there for Tamiya. Um, there's really nothing much happening there. They haven't bothered to go that far. But they do have at least the two plates, which is much better than the Zvezda kit, where basically you only get one plate and there's big holes in the bloody kit. So, um, yeah, so far, there we go. But... I don't know, quality of plastic, it's it's always very subjective. I mean, the Tamiya kit does look clean. I'll give it that. It does look clean. It always has this funny sort of feel to it. I don't know. I don't like Tamiya plastic. It always has funny feel. The gates, well, the gates in this one aren't too bad. Comparable. We, we won't say much more than that. I mean, I just don't like it. <laughs> I just don't like it. Probably because it's what I'm used to. If you're used to Tamiya, you'll like it. But, um... Certainly nothing wrong with the parts and nothing along with this assembly procedure because you continue adding um, swing arms and then your springs, right? And then you also add this front assembly. Similar on both kits, both Tamiya and Obivos um, have this swing arm assembly that goes on. Tamiya kit's a little more fiddly. Got a few more parts you don't really you wonder if you need. But um, all that goes together. Now, these parts here, after you put your swing arms on, you've got um, these little... I don't know what you call them, they're um, flanges or um, some sort of assembly that both holds two wheels. It's part of the Christie suspension, it's all very tricky. Now, on the Hobby Boss kit, um, they're very nicely detailed. Um, they're, looking, they're looking very good there. Middle you won't see a lot of this, it'll all disappear. But they have gone to the extra trouble, there's, there's extra ridges. And there's just a bit more attention to detail. Got some little, um, what are they, injection bloody gunk there to pull off. But that is on the inside of the exterior panel for the Hogwarts kit. So that's just a simple flat sand. Never see it and it's easy enough to remove. So now we haven't seen any other real problems. I mean, well, this is slide molded, so it's absolutely crystal sharp. Crystal club? Well, it's knife edge sharp. Crystal clear, yes. So, um, yes. So, quite frankly, I, I prefer the assembly method here for putting the whole body together that Hobby Horse has come up to and especially how they've gone about creating the suspension and to me that's going to make for a much easier build and I think it's going to look a lot better. I know all this is going to be covered up but it's nice that it's in there and well actually you can see in sometimes into some of these little holes so it depends what you do if you have a damaged tank or you want to rip a panel off you can have it in maintenance mode you have more options and that's that's all I'm saying. Moving back to step one again, I want to show you something. There's um, some indications here to do some drilling, right? They want to uh, to draw some things out. So uh, I don't know why that probably couldn't be done in the moulding process, or it's just cleaner and cleaner. Now, at the front here, on either side where the basically the Christie's suspension, the steering mechanism will go, they want a couple of holes. And there's no indication how far they are. They just say make a 0.5 millimetre hole and you start to panic until you have a look at the PE. They provide 
a little PE shape. So you would basically pop that in there and then there's your hole and you drill through and you put it over the reverse on the other side and there you go, they're a little template. Isn't that lovely? And then the only other ones they want you to drill are in the in the rear here, but they've given you locator holes on the underside. And this time, unlike my last kit, I remember to drill those through before I submit the thing on. Because so I forgot that with one of my other kits, I was building that cat soup. <laughs> and it's a bugger trying to work out where your holes should sit when you've glued the whole thing together. Anyhow, so far, I prefer this tub. It's certainly much better moulded, okay? That is that is slide moulding. Has to be. It is so sharp and clear. There's no way you get that from injection moulding. That That is lovely. And um, I like the way... They have done the interior uh, suspension. Oh, I like their solutions for doing that. And basically we've got to this stage here and I think it's it straights ahead of the Tamiya kit already. Now while we're talking about PE, because there's a few other little things here, I had a look through to see what they were. And um, basically was, they're all just little class, tiny little class, which, which will look very nice, which... When I did my BT7 was Vesta one, I had to buy those in the Edward kit. Edward kit supplied those. So um, that's all you get. There's just little little photo etch class and things that go on. And that's probably about that near all of them. Oh, there's one there as well, a little bitty. So it's just little handles and things which are tiny and fine. And, and that's it. Nothing else in the rest of it. Oh, yeah, there you go. And there's um, just a little couple of little straps, little anchor clips and straps for the, um, the exhaust. Now, while we are talking about PE, the Tamiya kit does come with a rather nice PE fret. But it's apples and oranges here because the exhaust system on the, um, the rear of the BT2, um, which you can sort of hardly see there, there's a, there we go, it was on that page, is um, external hanging off the back and it's just a cylinder with, um, you know, that basically blows out of a whole lot of vents. It doesn't even have any exhaust pipes. Whereas your BT7 has a whole massive grill at the back there, which, um, and, and it also has a whole lot of grills on the body. Now the BD2 doesn't, but it does have these here, and they could have grills, it's hard to say. But the thing is, this I had to buy as an Edward add-on for my Sylvester kit. Um, and nicely, Tamiya does include that with theirs, but it's really necessary because they're quite prominent. All these grills really stick out on, um, on the BT7. I might try and clear a photo here. So you can see the brass I put on my Zvesta PT7 that necessitated sort of making this look half decent. Tamiya does provide a nice little jig for this as well, so you can bend that. So that's, that's all quite good. So points for Tamiya there, but it's apples and oranges. It's a, it's a different vehicle. So, you know, if they'd left that out and just put plastic in, that would have been horrible. So I think Tamiya realised they had to do that. Otherwise, they would have been laughed at. Moving on to step seven now, and we're putting on all the wheels. Now the Hobby Wasp wheels are delicious. They are delightful. There's a lot of detail going there. They are very crisp. They're, um, these could be good or bad. They're, they're obviously there to protect the part or to aid in the injection system. Sure, um, but then I've got to trim them off. But hopefully they're on a, a flat piece because the wheels in these, these early BT series consist of all these little... Um, these little chunks, the rubber is like in little chunks. It's not actually a big tire, it's like little segments. It's like a big long centipede, and there are segments around there. So um, that may, that looks like they've put it exactly on a segment. So that might be just a very simple cut off and file. Mightn't be as bad as you think. And also the sprue join here is also on the segment. So that actually, despite the fact at first I had my reservations, that actually now looks pretty darn good. As a side-by-side -side comparison, it's hard. I mean, the Tamiya kit's green, and it's a different type of wheel. They're comparable. But the, these ones are nicer only because they're they're spoked and they're delicious and they're lovely. So, don't know. It'd be it'd be your choice there. But so far, I'm preferring this look on the Hobby Boss, but that could simply because it's a BT2 and not a BT7. Step eight has us building the track links, and they're all Indy links on this kit, which which I love because I have to replace the horrible Zvezda track links, although they were Indy links, with um, some aftermarket ones. And we'll talk more about that in just a sec. Now, these uh, are the early type track links for this particular vehicle. Um, you've got some with guide horns and some without, and you alternate 
a guide horn without, guide horn without, that's how it goes. Now, I will be able to produce some form of sag, but honestly, the early track links didn't really sag. They're too fat. These are too wide. It wasn't until later on the BT-7 had a narrower track link, and I'll show you all that in a sec, and that produced sag, and I actually see a photo here. That's the sag I actually use with aftermarket track links on my BT-7. Now, you can't do that with your Tamiya kit. No, you root it. <laughs> Tamiya kit's link and length, which is easier. It's certainly infinitely better than a bloody rubber band, which um, I've had in Tamiya tanks before, which I absolutely detest. But um, their track links aren't bad. They're very rud rudimentary. Um, not that you can do much. They're probably comparable. Okay, but you have got no sag. You've got an absolute flat piece of the bottom. You've got a flat piece of the top. You've got um, so the little up and, uh, you know, fore and aft right you lead in you lead out that's that's flat you've only got a few little links that you could actually use to do anything and not much they'll just curve around those wheels basically and they don't fit very well because they're very big now the bt7 well it may have occasionally had the old earlier bt5 and bt2 track links but when i did my research i found they ran with a much narrower link and surprisingly, the Becker has gone and bought the aftermarket track links that I use my BT-7. And they produce a much better effect. You can get the sag, you can get the wobble. He wants to put his running over the top of um, some um, some posts in a creek, which was a uh, was a, basically a propaganda film from the Russians that showed their tanks rushing across these posts sticking out of this bloody creek. So the tanks literally mid-air, and the only thing stopping it falling down are some posts, like, like some wharf posts without the wharf. And with that, he has sag underneath and sag on the top. So the only way you can accomplish that was to go any links. But again, yeah, if you were just wanting that BT early, BT2, even BT5 look, there's there's virtually no sag. It, it doesn't happen because there's nowhere for them to sag. The, the links are too too big. I mean, there might be a tiny bit here, but under under drive, when under tension, when it's moving, that would be exactly what it looks like. And admittedly, it could sag a little bit, but depends how... Again, you don't have much play with these links. In the BT-7 later on, especially when you see the propaganda films, you see how much they can sag. They can really sag. So what I'm saying is that is great for Bronco kit and you're not going to expect any sag or anything exciting. They're going to be terrific. And being individual links, I'm hoping they'll fit. They say 48 links aside. I hope they did their math and they fit because Zvesta didn't. <laughs> Zvesta got it wrong. Tamiya, you think would fit? That's their um, that's their claim to fame. Everything fits, you know. Tamiya kits just get thrown together. Well, you don't even have to think about it. You don't even have to, like friends of mine say, they don't even dry fit. They just cut the part out, and glue it in, because they're that confident with a Tamiya kit, everything will fit. Oh, that's nice. There's half the hobby gone. Yeah, no wonder they go together so fast. Um, what's the point of having a hobby if you know there's nothing to do? <laughs> Anyhow, you can't get any sag. And in fact, as I said, the backer had to go and buy aftermarket track links as well as his aftermarket PE and an aftermarket. He had to buy a lot of aftermarket with his um, Tamiya kit to get what he wanted. Whereas if um, Hobby Boss brings out the BT-7, I imagine they will still do individual track links and their options will be you know, available for you to sag it, bend it, do whatever you like. Food for thought. Moving on to step nine now, we're basically just adding the fenders and there's not a lot of parts. You've got a little bit of P there, you've got some little bloody wobbly sort of chainy thing. I don't know what that is. Oh, there you go. So there's some lovely rivet detail there and extends right into, into the recesses. So that fender is very nice and if we have a look at the rear side of the fender, okay, well we've got again injection. Mentally there are injection points on this, probably because it's a new mould, are not in but out. So they're pretty easy to sand off. You don't have to do any filling. You'll just be sanding those off. Won't be seen anyway. Everything will be hidden. Now, if we have a look at um, Tamiya, their approach, and again, I know it's apples and oranges, but still, uh, their fenders are boring as match it. Uh, now, I'd, I'll probably refer to the PE here to see what's going on. Okay, Becker then went and bought the aftermarket PE. Well, there's not much happening on that PE either, it's just flat. So, okay, well, we can't really talk much about this at all then, can we? Uh, we'll have a look at the um, 
The front fenders, they're basically the same. They were used pretty well consistently through all the VT series. So, you know, and they put the same marks in there. So there you go. So there's not much to be said about the fenders other than the Hobbywise kit has produced some lovely riveting there. Now, if if Tamir does do a BT2, I'll have to check. I don't think they do. I think they do a BT5. I'd like to see what they do on the fender and if it's as lovely as this. But anyhow, as far as the fenders go, comparing them, these fenders are nicer. But yeah, admittedly, it's two different vehicles. So we'll leave it at that. Jumping forward to the very last steps, and it's all about the turret. Now, they are going to be different. So what do we get? We get a beautifully slide moulded one piece turret. Lovely rivets and bolts, lovely hatch hinges. Um, you're going to have very little work to do with this. Now, there's no door on the back. No, because when you go to the BD7, it is, it is slightly different. It has um, basically the back end here, which is almost the same as the, the T34 in some ways. You get the little bustle at the back and... Um, that's a totally different shape. So maybe it's easier to slide mold when you don't have all this configuration because they've gone, this is Tamiya. Tamiya has gone the exactly like the Sylvester. You've got two halves and then you've got a top and you have to then glue them together and join the seams. Now, luckily, the joint at the back is basically around the door. So the door kind of covers that. So that's not too bad. That makes it a lot easier. And the joint at the front, well, it's um, hopefully it's Tamiya. So it's going to join perfectly. And then it should be fairly easy to um, put a little bit of filler on there and away you go. So, um, yeah, still devoid of a lot of detail. There's not much. Oh, there's a few little rivety things. I mean, again, we're apples and oranges. But um, it could be just that the BT2 is far more interesting. <laughs> so looking at the barrels. So this is the Hobby Boss kit. And... Get that to focus. All the barrels are hollowed out. They're beautiful. Uh, this isn't called for in the kit, but obviously that might be for a uh, BT5 um, later on. So there are extra parts that aren't used in this kit, but this was the barrel that um, that is called for. Sprue points are very fine. So um, that's going to be no problem at all to take off there. They're, um, they're actually triangulated in, so that will cut off very nicely. That's the only one. You've only got one clean-up point for that barrel, and you can easily hide that underneath, so it's never seen. So that's really good. This one's got a few more clean-up points, but we're not, we don't need to worry about that. We're not using it. We're not using it at all. So that's, um, that's part A24. Now there's the only other part we use here in the assembly is A14, which is the, the base, which is just... It's a round thing. It's a freaking donut. It's boring. But um, the other parts, which would be the mantlets itself, there um, there are options here, obviously. And this is because there's there's going to be um, two different sorts of barrels and different versions later on, obviously. So B3, um, that's the one we want to use. So we'll be using this one. And inside that, we're going to be using B16, which is this part here. And there's not a lot to them. They're pretty basic. But the thing is, the, um, the turret itself had so much detail that um, a lot of the work's already done for you. So, you know, much as I complained before with Tamiya, the work's already done for you, but I rather like that. That's that's already in there. You're just clicking everything else in, and then hopefully you're, um, you'll have some, some traverse. We have traverse? Yeah, well, it's got a little pin arrangement. Click, click. It might. It might come up and down. We'll find out. Okay, so that's what you get in Hobby Boss. Now, Tamiya... Much to my surprise, because I've seen some god awful barrels in my day in some of the Tamiya tank kits. They've got two barrels, and um, they've hollowed theirs out as well. Not quite as much. It might be subjective. It might be my little Tamiya hatred here. Um, their sprue points are different. They're, um, they might be, you know, they've got two on this barrel, so there's a bit more cleaning up to do. Not as easy to hide. And that basically sums it up for this kit. Now, both had clear parts for the um, for the lights. The Tamiya kit does come with a chain, um, but again, this kit doesn't stipulate a chain. You can put a chain on it. My BT7, I just bought an aftermarket chain. It cost me like a dollar. <laughs> it was no big deal. 
And yeah, you know, admittedly, there's no photo etch here for the grills, well, there's no need for it. And these um, these little side grills, well, they're, they're not very high. I'll have to do some research. It doesn't even look like they have photo etch. Well, you know, they don't have mesh, uh, therefore necessitating the photo etch. But there you go. There's there are two different kits. There's two different vehicles, okay? But if you wanted to build one or the other and you're just looking at building a BT series tank, quite frankly, I'd build the BT2. Um, not just because I don't like Tamiya. I mean, I would have given it a fair go, but quite frankly, there's a lot more going on. There's a lot more of interest. So it could be just that BT2s are a lot more fun. Comparably, the Tamiya kit and this Hobby Boss kit, there's, there's pros and cons in both of them. So, you know, if you really want to build a BT7, build the Tamiya kit. Infinitely better than the Zvezda kit. Um, but if you want something a bit more interesting and different, well, you can build the BT2, which is what I'm going to do. So some final observations on this. Now, admittedly, the Tamiya kit, of course, comes with figures, as Tamiya kits do, but they're just sitting outside of the tank. So you have to build a diorama. They're not in your tank. You know, you don't have a commander or... So, yeah, great. You're stuck with that. Some guy pointing at a map, another guy leaning over doing a fart. Hmm, brilliant. Um, now, Beck has gone the Bronco aftermarket track links, which I would as well. I wouldn't use those Lincoln Link for Tamiya. Um, one, it may be the early version of the BT7, but the later BT7s and the one, especially the one he wants to do, that's in the um, propaganda films, has the narrower track links. And I'll just quickly show you that because I'm going on about it. They, um, they are a hell of a lot narrower. They are much narrower. Now, I've shown this if you have a look at my BT7 um, build series. You'll see now, one way to tell is these links are only as wide as a guide horn. Literally. That's it. And if we create a quick look at um, these track links, the guide horn is about an extra quarter either side. The guide horn's just over half the size of the link. That's the difference. That's the difference. You nearly get twice as many of these links on the vehicle than you do the other ones. That allows for sag. That allows you to do all kinds of things, which which I did with mine, which looked really nice. And when people bagged me, I went, that's not right. They're always straight. I went, hang on. The BD5 and maybe some of the early BD7s were straight, but the later BD7s had sag, and I showed photos. So that shoved it to the rim of counters. <laughs> Now, uh, fenders, fenders, okay. Now, Becker's gone and bought this whole body aftermarket for his, Ed, his Edward aftermarket for his Tamiya kit, right? And I thought, why? Well, Tamiya had those lovely screens. I've already got those, you know, what's he on about? Well, fenders. Now, fenders. I've got out my little trusty little uh, calipers here, which allow you to measure the size of a nat stick. And uh, I measured first the BT2 from Hobby Boss. And surprisingly, I checked in a number of places, those fenders are half a mil thick. I was quite surprised. I thought that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Maybe that's one technology. And then I measured the Tamiya one, again, in a number of places. And Tamiya one is from one mil to greater thick. So the Tamiya fenders are thick suckers. And no doubt that's why Becker has decided he wants to put the photo etch on, because they'll be well, less, quarter, 0.2 of a mil, you know whatever size the thickness of that photo, which is not much, not much at all. That will be a gnat stick thick. <laughs> so here's the thing. You could build the BT2 from Hobby Boss out of the box. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You know, everything's good. Everything's molded well. You've got heaps of options. You can do all kinds of things. It's a much more interesting subject, my opinion. Much more rivet set account. You know, it's quite good. Um, you could add a metal barrel, but you don't need to. That barrel would be really easy to cut off the sprue, as I said. It's only got one point that you're going to see underneath. You can hide underneath, clean up. Now, take away the figures, because yeah, you've got those figures of Tanya, but as I said, I think they're pretty useless anyway. They're not really part of the equation because they're guys on the ground. With the Tamiya kit, well, you've got the wrong links unless you want to do that version. So if you want the proper links on the BD7, which are much more interesting, you have to buy aftermarket. The fenders are the wrong thickness. They're too chunky, unless you can put up with that. You'll have to buy aftermarket. There's probably a few other things here you can add on. The, um, the barrel, well, it's not as nice on the Tamiya kit. You don't have to, but you probably want to. Then again, that's only going to be like a couple of dollars expense. That's nothing. And I'll probably buy that for my BT2 anyway, because they're just so cheap. This kit, this Tamiya BT7, retails for close to $60 here. Six shekels, okay? 
Um, that's often with postage, but that's what you're going to pay. And they're hard to find. And, you know, that's what you're going to pay. And then you're going to spend, well, let's see, these 10, 15, 2, those are about 20. Okay, he's probably spent 30, 40. He spent $100. The Becker spent $100 on his BD7 to make it do what it wants to do. Okay? Now, I've spent half that, less than five shekels, on my BT2. That was delivered. And I can build it straight out of the box, and it's great. And I don't have any of these dramas. I could spend $2, 0 0.2 of a shekel, and buy a metal barrel, but I don't have to. This is my beef. Now, I don't know if your kits are cheaper where you are. Maybe where you are, the Tamiya kit and the Hobby Boss kit the same price. You know, who knows? Maybe the Tamiya kit's cheaper. But that's the problem we have in Australia. So the last word on this is the Tamiya kit is great. If you want to build a BT7, Tamiya kit's the one to get. No complaints there. It's a good kit, right? Don't get me wrong. But I would rather build the Hobby Boss BT2. I'm much more excited about this. It's got more interesting wheels, although they're not shown in the box art. It's got a much more interesting turret. Um, there's more detail here and there. There's more parts. There's more options. There's, there's link and length, uh, link, link tracks, not link and length. There's everything I want in a kit is in here. So for me, Hobby Boss BT2 wins. No argument.